Yes, I looked back and I said, what possessed me? So, Maria Corazon Sumulong Kuwangko was born on January 25, 1933 in Paniki, Tarlac, located in central Luzon, Philippines, north of Manila. Her parents were Jose Chichioko Kuwangko and Demetria Metrin Sumulo. And the family was of mixed Chinese, Filipino, and Spanish descent. The family surname is a Spanish version of the Chinese name Kokuango. She attended school in Manila until the age of 13, then finished her education in the United States, first in Philadelphia and later in New York City. She graduated from the College of Mount St. Vincent in New York in 1953 with a bachelor's degree in both French and mathematics. Upon returning to the Philippines, she enrolled in law school in Manila where she met Benigno Aquino Jr., an ambitious young journalist who also came from a family with considerable wealth. The couple married in 1954 and would go on to have five children together, one son and four daughters. Benigno Aquino Jr. was elected to the presidency in 1965. Marcos' administration was marred by corruption, human rights violation, and political repression. In 1972, Marcos declared martial law, effectively stripping his citizens of their democratic rights and arresting key opposition leaders, including Benito King, who spent seven years in jail before being permitted to relocate with his family to the United States in the year 1980. After three years in exile, Benito Kino returned to the Philippines on August 21, 1983 when he was killed by two soldiers soon after arriving. Marcos was presumed to be behind the killing and Benigno's assassination set off a wave of protests against Marcos' administration. When Ferdinand E. Marcos unexpectedly called for presidential election in February 1986, Corazon Aquino became the unified opposition's presidential candidate. On February 25, 1986, Aquino and Marcos was inaugurated as president by their respective supporters. But that same day, Marcos fled the country. On February 25, 1986, as a result of the People Power Revolution, Corazon Aquino became the first female president of the Philippines. She restored democracy to the country, promulgated a new constitution, and served until 1992. She created the Presidential Task Force for Science and Technology, elevating and envisioning the status of the Philippines to be the next industrialized country. She also encouraged technological innovation known as the Philippine Inventors and Invention Incentives Act, FFTC 3850, or the Philippine Inventors Incentives Act, which was signed on April 13, 1964. This created a Philippine Inventors Commission to promote and encourage the creation and manufacture of Philippine inventions. In 1986, during the Corazon Aquino's presidency, the National Science and Technology Authority was replaced by the Department of Science and Technology, giving science and technology a representation in the cabinet. Under the medium-term Philippine Development Plan for the years 1987 to 1992, science and technology's role in the economic recovery and sustained economic growth was highlighted. During Corazon Aquino's State of the Nation Address in 1990, she said that science and technology development shall be one of the top three priorities of the government towards an economic recovery. Additionally, during the first time of presidency in the 90s, the DOSTASTI has undertaken numerous projects in network technologies and high-performance computing, including pioneering efforts in open-source software, IPv6, VOIP, and establishing exchanges that were ahead of the industry. ASTI developed products ranging from the electronic data acquisition, biomedical and environmental monitoring systems are deployed across the country, supporting nationwide initiatives in public health, e-governance, education, and disaster risk management, notably through its crucial role in developing the underlying nationwide infrastructure of over 1,500 sensors and weather stations for Project NOAA. So Project NOAA is the government's flagship program 
for disaster prevention and mitigation, which aims to create a disaster-free Philippines by providing tools and information to mitigate or avert disasters caused by natural hazards. The ASTI itself was established on January 30, 1987 through Executive Order No. 128 issued by Aquino. The institute became one of the government's agency which focuses on the field of research and development, information and communications technology, and microelectronics. The OST ASTI, or Advanced Science and Technology Institute, continues to pursue and implement changes on its organizational operations to bring about a more efficient and service-oriented organization. A new organizational structure was implemented to provide a more focus on its programs and at the same time, accord significant contributions to the community. Efforts continue to streamline and review organizational performance and provide a more customer-centered and proactive organization. Kaya naman sa palagay ko ay napapanahon lang The DOST Advanced Science and Technology Institute is mandated to perform the following functions. First is the scientific research and development in the advanced fields of information and communication technology and microelectronics. Next is the undertake of long-term researches to strengthen and modernize science and technology infrastructure. Another is the conduct of research and development work in the advanced fields of ICT and microelectronics and complement the overall endeavor in the scientific field with intensive activities in the computer and information technologies. The DOST ASTI focuses its resources in the following programs. Information and Communications Technology, R&D. This aims to adopt, adopt, and or develop strategic and R&D activities in the areas of wireless technologies, advanced networks, internet applications, software development, artificial intelligence or machine learning, and high-performance computing. Next is microelectronics R&D. This seeks to develop a state-of-the-art microelectronics design facility for digital or analog and mixed signal microelectronics. Another is embedded system and 3D prototype. Next is the technology transfer. This pursues dynamic assimilation of research results by industry academy, NGOs, and government instrumentalities. It aims to transfer R&D outputs and advanced know-how through the conduct of trainings and seminars, technology diffusion or commercialization, collaborative R&D, and industry studies. As President of the Philippines, as President of the Philippines, we serve and defend its fundamental law. So on August 8, 1988, the Corazon Aquino created the Presidential Task Force for Science and Technology which came up with the first Science and Technology Master Plan or SDMP. The goal of SDMP was the Philippines to achieve newly industrialized country status by the year 2000. Um, the Congress did not put much priority in handling bills related to Science and Technology. The Senate Committee on Science and Technology was one of the committees that handles the fewest bills for deliberation. At Republic Act 6655 or the Free Public Secondary Education Act of 1988 opened doors to free education up to the secondary level. Implemented in the education system together with this was the Science for the Masses program which aimed at the scientific and technological literacy among Philippines. The Aquino administration recognized the importance of science and technology in the development of the Philippines into a newly industrialized country. I hope that the multitudes will be there to... During her term, President Corazon Aquino encouraged scientists and inventors to bring the Philippines to its former position as second to Japan in the fields of science and technology. One of the goals of her administration 
was to achieve the status as being an industrialized country by 2000. She urged that the private research sector form a stronger bond between public research to help jumpstart the progress in the area of Philippine research and development. During her term, President Corazon Aquino encouraged scientists and inventors to bring the Philippines to its former position as second to Japan in the fields of science and technology. One of the goals of her administration was to achieve the status as being an industrialized country by 2000. She urged that the private research sector form a stronger bond between public research to help jumpstart the progress in the area of Philippine research and development. She understood that the issues faced by the country, hence she envisioned the key to progress is science and its technological applications. The history of the developed economies of the world proved this, and the lesson is underscored by the story of emergence of the newly industrialized countries. Twenty years ago, Philippines was second only to Japan in scientific and technological know-how in Asia, and she wanted that position back. So the major contributions of science and technology to Philippine nation building are linked to its socio-economic progress and its industrialization. Today, the current state of our country is very low in its capacity to produce local goods for domestic needs as well as the international scientific research publication. Over the years, the emergence of information and communications technology has greatly affected the lives of people in the world, crossing borders among countries and bringing access closer to one another. In the same token, the birth of microelectronics has resulted to progress in the development of smaller, lighter, and more efficient electronic devices.